Well, guys, I'm a little ticked. I got so focused on working on the chassis that I didn't notice that the video camera shut itself off. Anyway, I had cut this hole out on camera showing y'all how to file this out, and the camera was off. The audio was going, but the video was off. So, And I can't punch on another one, so I'm just going to have to kind of go back over what I did. I measured the total width of this uh, power socket, which is 31 millimeters, and then added in the, the one millimeter of this little lip. And so we're going to split the difference and make it 17 millimeters to get to the center. So we went from this top hole, this top mark that I made, and went down and marked 17 millimeters. Then we, you know, drilled out with several different size drill bits the center of this up to this um, 24 64th bit in the center here. And then we used the same chassis punch that I showed y'all in an earlier episode where we punched where we punch these holes out, you just use this same one and you punch this hole out. As you can see, it's a real close fit as far as being the, the round size of this. And then I took my round file here and went off in this direction and this direction and this direction and this direction. And then I came back with my little flat file and filed these flat parts in like that and got, you know, and got, well, that's actually a little, could use a little more there to get it nice and flat. And then you go off in this direction to get these two further parts out, just kind of square off these bottom corners. And then you come back with a flat file and you file where it's rounded, you file the flats back and you just keep working and, you know, slowly, you know, fitting this up and then looking, you know, looking to see, you know, it might be hitting on the top a little bit or it might be hitting on one side. And you just keep working it. And then if you want to move it, like if you've got the bottom good but the top's hitting, you can take a little more off the top. Or if it looks like the hole's like working its way too much this direction or that direction, you can file in the direction you need. And the hole doesn't have to be super pretty. The main thing you want to make sure of is that this is pretty flat and this is pretty flat. Because these two edges get real close. There's only like a millimeter of overlap. But like in this area in here, there's plenty of room for slop. You're not going to... There's nothing... You, this can cover up a lot of sins. So, and then once you get this centered like that, you mark these two holes here, and then drill a pilot hole and a big hole, and those are the screws that hold this down. Again, I wish you could have seen me do this. It only took about five minutes, and just make sure these files you get aren't real coarse. You want pretty fine files because this metal's not very thick, and if you get too coarse of a file, it'll just grab and it'll end up bending this metal all up instead of you know cutting it out like we want. Then when you're done, you come back and go like. like that to round off the inside edge and then you do the same thing on the outside like, just like that. and then you're good and then I came back and deburred these holes on the inside of the outside and then the last thing that I had to that happened while the camera was dead was mounting this little choke that's gonna go down in this lower corner obviously on the inside but it's gonna sit like this and so I held it up here like this and then marked these two holes and then drilled them out to hold this thing down. 
you know, again, sorry that the, I didn't notice that the camera wasn't rolling, but I got so focused. I do have the screen flipped up so I can see it, but I just forgot to look up and see that it was, that it had shut itself off. I've caught it a couple times before, but I missed it that time. The only thing left we have to do is to drill the holes for the RCA jacks. And on the input ones, I highly recommend you put them on the front here and keep them as close to these two inputs as you can because this is a very low signal level coming into the board that's going to get amplified like crazy. And so this is where you're going to pick up noise. And so if you tried to put them in the back here and then run them all the way up to the front, even with shielded wire going past all this AC stuff, I, you're gonna, it's going to be noisy. I just don't think there's any way to do it and stay quiet. The other thing that I did on my past one, and I'm going to do on this one too, the output is right here in the back of the board. And I didn't want to run them out the back either. And on my personal tube amps, you've probably seen where the inputs are into the side. And this sits, like my amp sits here, and the inputs for my amp are right here. And so I just put them in the top, right up above these. Now, you may want to put yours in the side, which would be fine. If you're going to do it in the side, make sure that you think about like the board's going to be on these little standoffs. It's going to be sitting in here like this. Okay? So you don't want to put the RCA jacks, you know, right where the board is. You're going to want to put them either up high or down low. And so that's the other option that I see as a viable one. And again, the outputs are right here. So if you were going to put them in the sides, you put them somewhere like here or like right here. But I'm going to be doing mine on the front and the top. And let me find my little RCA jacks that I'm going to be using. Here they are right here. I'm going to actually see if I can zoom in here. Okay, I really like these. For one reason, you're soldering the wire directly onto the body of the RCA jack, and you're not soldering it to some little tab. And like these come off from the front like this. It's got your two insulating washers. And then here's the jack, here's the jack itself. And so you're soldering directly on there and directly onto the body. One thing you want to do before you install these or try to solder to them, you want to file this gold colored stuff off of this lug because whatever this coat whatever this plating is doesn't solder very well and when you uh, file through this with like just a little needle file it gets down to the brass and it solders much better so these are the jacks we're going to be using we got we need a white and a red of each one and actually I found these on eBay I can't remember the the vendor but you can use whatever kind of jacks that you want to use so then we come in and measure the shoulder there's a little shoulder here that needs to stick through the hole you want to make sure you're measuring that shoulder and not the hole size because that's the size hole we need to drill for these to go through. So again, we go through our, our drill selection. This is a fairly big hole. I think it looks like 7 16 So, the, let's do the ones in the front first. And we, are, we are on the home stretch here. Okay, so we want to put these 
I'm going to put mine down a little low so I can put my little Skunky Designs logo over the top of them. So they're going to go down here towards the bottom. And when I get done with all this, I'm going to put together some, not really CAD files, but do some, um, you know, drawings of where all the holes are located and what distance they are from the edge. Because I'm, I'm going to, I'm cheating a little bit and measuring off my previous preamp. And they're at 650 thousandths and it worked really good. So I'm going to mark, do a real light little... Scrape across here, not even through the plastic. It's 650 thousandths. And then, and then they're two and a half inches from each edge. So again, just a little mark like that, a little mark like that. And then the last thing we have to do is we need a ground lug to connect the turntable ground to. And it's gonna be on the same plane but it's going to be an inch and a quarter from the edge. So it's going to be right there. And then get the same 650 thousandths and mark that way. So then we come in with our automatic center punch and punch these holes. that one and there's that one and once again I'm gonna flip this off camera because it's really hard to start the hole drilling from that direction and I really don't it would be a lot of trouble to keep moving the camera around when all I'm doing is just getting a, this hole started. Okay, so once I get the hole started, and just be careful, don't put your hand back behind here like this and drill a hole through your finger. Nobody's going to be happy if you do that. And then like we've been doing every time, we're going to slowly go up a drill size and a drill size and a drill size until we have the hole drilled. And if I wasn't thinking here, I might have gone ahead and drilled this hole out again. We're not doing that. We're leaving this small. It might be slightly bigger than that, but I'm not sure exactly what hole size we're going to be drilling the ground screw out to yet. And so we'll finish that up later. But we've got it like marked where we've got a pilot hole drilled for it. And then I can measure what I used last time. And I'll show you that when we get ready to mount the ground lug for the turntable lead, the, you know, the turntable ground wire. Okay, I just want to make sure that I'm getting the right size drill for this RCA jack insulating washer before I punch that hole out. Yep. And like when I like I'm drilling mine to a 716th, yours may be something different. So make sure you measure what whichever type you're using.
and then we come back very gently and deburr that hole. And then we'll put our washer up there and make sure it sits. Then the only thing we have left is to put the two RCA jacks in the top of the chassis and we're all done. I still feel a little burr on that one. Well, that's the that's the funo the funo ground one. Yeah, those are nice and smooth. We'll do the outside of that one. Okay, and let's see if this washer fits in the hole perfect. And that will insulate the jack from the chassis because we do not want the jacks grounded to the chassis. So the last thing we have to do is drill the holes for the two jacks that are going into the top of the amplifier. And they are the same two and a half millimeters, or I mean two and a half inches from the edge of the board as the front ones were. So we can look about where this output is. And it's just inboard of these screws and do a little mark like that and like that. And again, the locations of location of these is not like super critical. It just needs to be somewhere above this little area of the board so that they can get wired up to here and then come up through the top of the chassis. And so I know it's like right there. It's right there. So it would be nice. What I may do is measure off the back of this because my caliper, that's too long a distance for my caliper. So I'll measure off the back of this tube hole just so they're the same. And then get my wood, put it underneath. And the same thing. We start off with the, with the smaller size bit and work our way up to the larger size and get these two holes drilled for the RCA jacks on the top. And that's going to be pretty much it for the fab work. Um, the only thing left to do is building the bulkheads. And I'm going to save that for another video. So... As you can see, this isn't just unbelievably hard work to do. I think that anybody can do this work. I know a lot of people seem intimidated by it, but to me, this is what really is fun because at the end of the day, when you're done with it, doing it, doing all of this stuff, you've actually built this thing from scratch. This wasn't something where you just assembled, you know, assembled a kit. You actually built this thing from just a bare chassis and made it your own. And like I said, you can, you know, if you want the power jack on the side here, you could put it over here, or you could put the RCA jacks here, or put them over in the side, and you, may, you can make it fit your layout. And honestly, I just didn't have the room and couldn't find chassis that were really the right size to separate these into two different pieces and still fit on my shelf. I mean, I found one that was 
the right size for this front part, but then I couldn't find one that was small enough for this back part that wasn't like way, you know, almost the same size as this. But if you were going to put the power board like on the floor or, you know, way away from the preamp, you could build it in two different pieces too if you want and run wires between them. I know some people have said they've done that and I'm sure that works well too. And then all I've got left is come in and deburr these two holes. And that's going to be it. So I think the next video I'm going to populate up the power board and get the power board mounted in here and get you know the switch mounted and get the transformers mounted and get all the wiring to the power board done and then we'll I kind of like doing a little bit of eat you know not just doing everything like all the fabrication at once doing a little bit of fab work then doing a little bit of you know like we did with this doing a little bit of board work then going back and doing a little bit of fab work and then a little board work and we'll get this mounted in and then come back and I'll show you how to fabricate these out and they're just going to be made out of some fairly thin let me grab this it's just going to be fabricated out of this you know thin sheet aluminum and we're going to you know cut cut some pieces cut some pieces out and then bend the edges over and my plan is I'm going to have um you know bend bend 190 degree edge here then bend 190 degree on each side and what I may try to do is make the 90 degree edges on the top go over far enough where it uses these holes and is sandwiched between these standoffs and the screws that hold them down so we don't have like extra screw holes in the top and we'll just have like two screws here and then two screws here holding the little wings of these bulkheads in place. But we'll figure that out when we get to that part. And again, sorry about the camera shutting off while I was, you know, punching out this hole because I really wanted to show y'all as, as intimidating as this may look, as long as you've got like a fairly smooth round file and just take your, you know, this larger size, I think it's a 3 8 and just take your time, it, it's not really hard to do. You know, you can do it with a Dremel, but those get out of control so quick. And you can be cutting along and they go, whoop, and they, you know, jump across the, the surface and leave a big mark. And I just feel as easy and as short a period of time as it takes to do this by hand, just get a couple of hand files. Like those, those two right there will do what you need. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and you're enjoying the series. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you soon as we get back to work doing more work on this EAR 834 Phonostage preamp project. Have a great day.